Okay, so on to regression. So this chapter in the book has a lot of stuff. Why is there so much stuff in there? But mainly we're going to cover multiple regression and uh, hierarchical regression. We won't have time after making these notes last night to get to mediation and moderation, which is kind of unfortunate, but we lost a week because of the way they changed the uh, Thanksgiving schedule. Um, so I have a note in there like, you can do this with the package we're going to talk about today, but we don't have time for it. Um, and what ha next semester I'll teach this class in a different form, and I do have time to cover mediation and moderation. So if you get to your thesis and you're like, crap, I have to do mediation, I'll have a video, how-to video for that. Um, plus you can always come ask. Uh, but we won't have time to get to it. Basic regression, we got to cover in some form, so that's what we're doing today. Um, and we've been doing regression all year, actually, so it's kind of like, hey, this is a summation of all those ANOVAs. Uh, but what is regression, if you're doing it, calling it regression and not calling it ANOVA? It's basically predicting uh, a Y, some variable, with another variable. So it's the model of the relationship between two variables. We're going to keep using linear models. Right? And so we're going to have equations now instead of mean differences. So the biggest switch from ANOVA to regression is just the way you report it, because mathematically they're the same. Uh, so we talked about this last week. So the model for correlation is BX plus error, but um, when you do correlation coefficients, that's a standardized B. So error and model gets <coughs> pushed together into R. And so we just look at the strength of R to talk about model fit. So bigger R's fit better. Or you can look at the confidence interval and see how wide the confidence interval is. Um, <coughs> so instead of doing mean plus error and looking at the error, now we just have R. Um, and so with regression, we're going to use multiple uh, variables. So we can't just use R, because R is only one, one variable, one x, one y. <coughs> So instead, we're going to use a couple of different variables. Um, here's marker. So this is the math form on the slide. <coughs> Most psychology people see it as A plus BX plus error. <coughs> okay. uh, so the slope here, so the slope is the increase in y for every one unit increase in x. So if I am trying to predict Aaron's anxiety by the number of days till the conference, right? It's actually nonlinear power function. <laughs> um, at the moment, <laughs> a little over my head. Uh, let's say the slope was two points. So for every day we get closer to the conference, <coughs> my anxiety is going up two points. So it's for every one unit increase in x, there are b unit increases in y. And so slope is just which way the regression line goes. So this would be a positive slope. So it's the gradient is how you'll see it described sometimes, how steep it is. They can be negative, they can be flat. Just like r, it tells you the direction. So if it's negative, it leans the other way. And the strength. So larger B values have a larger slope, so they're steeper. B sub zero here, or um, A, if you've ever seen this version, that's the y-intercept. So it's the point where it crosses the y-axis. Um, and that's basically when x is zero. So I guess this will be my anxiety level when the conference is over because right, there are no days left. Um, this is not the best example, but the, the average level of y. Okay. So the cool thing about uh, the intercept is it's the average of y, okay, ignoring x. So really, it should be like way up here. Okay. So it's the point at which uh, it crosses the y-axis. You can test if both of these are significantly different from 0 using uh, no hypothesis testing, but uh, most people don't look at the intercept. Generally, it's not part of what you're interested in. You're interested in is 
the slope significance so of can I use x to predict y, uh, but there are times that you want to understand the intercept. So some of the research that we do, we're interested if the intercept is greater than zero, and so we'll see if that's significant or not. Uh, but generally, it kind of gets ignored. <coughs> so some different pictures, I mean you guys kind of should have an idea of what regression is, but these would have the same intercept with different slopes. And if these would have different intercepts but the same slope. <clears throat> and so both pieces are important, but generally people only look at the slope. <clears throat> so some types of regression. There's simple linear regression, sometimes it's abbreviated SLR. That's when you have one X and one Y. All of this is one DV. If you get into multiple DVs, you're doing structural equation modeling. Okay, so this is all one DV. Simple linear regression, correlation, same thing. So most people don't do a regression analysis, they just tell you the correlation, because they're the same. Multiple linear regression, or MLR, is two or more X's and one Y. And generally that's what people, if you're going to do a regression, you're doing multiple, because if you've just got simple, <coughs> you are. It's the same thing. <coughs> However, there are a bunch of types of multiple regression. There's also multi-level modeling, um, and uh, there's even more types than this, but these are the most common type. So simultaneous regression, we're going to do one of the simultaneous and one of the hierarchical, is everything at once. So this is where you like throw everything in a wall and see what sticks. So I've got all these variables, here are all of them at once. Which one is most important? Hierarchical regression is where you do it in steps. First control for this, then do this. Or I want to do all of these together and then all of these together. <coughs> stepwise is a hot mess. So stepwise is sometimes called statistical regression. Uh, because what it does is it takes... Sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so stepwise regression. <laughs> trying not to laugh here. Uh, okay. So it's not recommended for reasons. Uh, so let's think about this. If stepwise is where a you take a bunch of different variables and then it picks mathematically which variable is the most related. That would be forward. Or it takes all of them, puts them all in the equation, and removes the least related. That's called backwards. That part's not important. Um, and so it's not recommended because it's not theory based. So it just like mathematically picks whichever one's highest. Um, regression is known to be temperamental due to sample. So different samples will give you different um, slopes. And so people don't recommend stepwise because they want you to have a theory instead. Sometimes it's useful. So the analysis I was complaining about doing all weekend, I actually use stepwise partially because they're super highly correlated. So all the variables are very related, about 0.6 or so, and it was which <coughs> one is the best? Well, if I put all of them in together, they're just going to cancel each other out because they're so correlated. Um, that's called suppression. Uh, so what I did was I just told it to run stepwise, pick the best one first. Since all of them should be related, I wanted to know which one was the highest. But you have to have a really good reason to do stepwise, or they're going to basically tell you to not do it. Um, so when we do a regression, we have sort of two parts. Uh, one is the model significant. <coughs> so is my overall model significant? So is r squared greater than zero? <coughs> so can I use these variables, variable or variables, to predict y? So is r squared better than chance? And then the second part is the predictors. <coughs> so is r squared greater than zero, or you can think of this as b greater than, different than zero. <coughs> so how useful is each predictor in the model? So I'm going to look at my coefficients. So coefficient means b. Right, it's a t test, and is p r squared greater than zero, or is b different than zero? Could be negative, could be positive, but is it predictable? <coughs> so for the overall model part, you know, you guys love sum of squares. 
We're almost done with them. This is the last week of summer squares. EFA is a very different mess. Okay. So remember when we were doing ANOVA, we talked about total sum of squares was every person's score minus the grand mean. We broke that into model, which was level minus the grand mean residual, score minus my level. So that's still called least squares because we want to find this, the regression equation, we do a regression that makes the smallest residual. Okay, so that's the least part. Squares because it's all squared. <clears throat> but instead of predicting a flat line, now we're going to predict a up and down line. And so instead of doing each person's level minus their, their level mean, we're doing each person minus their predicted score. <clears throat> so what we're doing with sum of squares is going from using this as ANOVA, right, where we're predicting the mean, to taking that slope and making it not zero, and predicting based on a slope rather than a flat slope. Okay, so ANOVA predicts, here's group one, here's group two. Okay. What I can do with regression is take those flat slopes and make them <coughs> not flat. Okay. And so the difference between the two uh, allows me to see which one is the least squared. Okay, so sum of squares total is uh, each person minus the grand mean. Sum of squares residual is how far off am I predicting at um, their score and models the difference between the two. So how much better do I get when I go from a flat line to a not flat line? This is what model is. I have that all summed up over here. Okay. So it's still total variability. So it's each person's score minus the grand mean. Okay. The grand mean is what's the mean of y. So it's basically my score minus the intercept. Okay. Residual is how far off am I predicting your score? So it would be my score minus what you would have predicted me to be at. So here's my actual anxiety. Here's what you predicted. How far off are you? And model is predicted score minus the grand mean. So how much better am I getting by going from flat to not flat? Um, <clears throat> so it's the same framework as ANOVA. Because ANOVA is just regression with categorical predictors, which we're also going to do today. So everything we've done this semester is a special case of regression. <clears throat> Ooh, fancy slide. So if I had to kind of sum all that up, we've got total variance, we're breaking that down <coughs> into I'm not very close, how close I am to predicting the score, and how much better I get by not using the mean. So when I add x into the equation, how much better am I? <clears throat> So if model is much better than sum of squares residual, we win. And because this question was so, wait, where did it go? No, I took it out. There was a slide about what F is. I haven't totally finished looking at the tests, but hot mess might be a good word for them. All right. <clears throat> Oop, sorry, that's not right. Um, just to kind of remind you, so what we do is we take those sum of squares and we transfer them into mean square, right? We divide by the degrees of freedom. Um, but this is how much of good variance we have. So this is how useful it was to add any or all of the predictors, right? So it's not just one variable, it could be multiples. And this is how much bad variance or error there is. So uh, the overall model is still a ratio of good variance to bad variance. And we want that to be much larger than one because if it's a one to one ratio, that means all the good variance and all the bad variance are equal. Okay, if it's a 600 to one ratio, that means 600 uh, more good variance than bad variance. So still, it's a log odds ratio. Um, it's not log odds, it's an odds ratio. It's not log, sorry. Um, where we have the ratio of good to bad variance and you want it to be big. So since I know that question was one of the ones that was kind of so for the overall model, it's going to be an ANOVA that we'll write up the same way we've been writing up. And you're going to pair that with R squared. This is big R squared because we have multiple variables. And it's the proportion of variance accounted for by the regression model. So here's the dv. Here's x1, x2. R squared is all of this. 
how much variance in the DV is accounted for by the IVs? So it's big R because there's more than one. And that is the Pearson correlation coefficient, big R squared. But you get it in the output automatically. But in case you forgot the formula, the sum of squares model over sum of <coughs> first total. Bless you. Second thing we're going to do is look at predictors. So when we were doing ANOVA, we did ANOVA and then we did post hocs. So we did like an overall model, was it significant, yes or no? If yes, then we went on to post hocs, which were t-tests. So this is the same pattern. We do ANOVA, we look at the t-tests. Uh, they go much quicker because it's part of the output. Yes? <laughs> okay, <laughs> there's no way. We will take a break. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so ANOVA to post hocs, ANOVA to t-tests. But it's a single sample t-test. Because we're going to test if B is not greater than zero, it's different from zero. It's different than, just like a word. Okay. So is B different from zero? Or if you want to say the absolute value of B, right, it could be negative, so I don't want to say greater than. So the test statistic is B, the slope, divided by standard error, and that's the exact same thing we've been doing. T-test is what mean difference divided by standard error. So it's now B divided by standard error. So it's still a ratio of good model variance to error. So T is the same idea. It's like how um, much good variance accounts for and how much bad variance is, and you want it to be big. <coughs> So it's a single sample t-test though, and not um, dependent or independent. So t is usually reported for the coefficients, but df is not obvious anywhere. SPSS, R, none of it. It never just shows you df right there next to it. So it's calculated by n minus k minus 1. So n is the total sample size, k is the number of predictors. So with correlation, we have one x and one y. It's n minus one minus one, which is n minus two, okay. which we uh, were probably supposed to talk about last week, but I don't think I did. So the degrees of freedom for correlation is n minus two. It's also df residual. Okay. So the residual variance is count or uh, error degrees of freedom is n minus k minus one. So you can just look where it says residual. Uh, so that means they should match f. And when we get there, I'll show you some more. A <coughs> couple more definitions. So B is the unstandardized regression coefficient. And this is the interpretation. So for every one unit increase in X, there's B unit increases in Y. So B was two in our example. For every day that it gets closer to the conference, Aaron's anxiety goes up two points. Beta. Beta. This thing. is the standardized regression coefficient. And that's B in standard deviation units. So it's a z-score. Right, so beta is a z-score. For every one standard deviation increase in x, there's beta. So it should be beta on there. I think my slides ate it. SDs and y. <coughs> Which one should you use? It depends. B is favored because it's interpretable. It's in the scale of the data. And so if I'm talking about for every one day closer, it's two points on the anxiety scale. That's in the same scale, so I understand what's going on. Beta is better if your variables have different scales. So if you're trying to tell which variable is the best, beta is a z-score. So you can say, well, this one is the largest beta, so it's the best. Right? So if you have one scale that's a 1 to 5 and one scale that's a 1 to 1,000, they're going to have very different b's because they're in different scales. So beta is z to help you uh, compare them to each other. And there's a little bit on like how do I compare regression coefficients, but honestly, I always just look at the size of them. So if one is much larger than the other, I just kind of say this one is bigger because it's a z-score and it's bigger. <coughs> all right. So because of all the mouse drama, <laughs> let's pause there. See if we can solve said mouse drama.